Today on Smacky's Garage, we're gonna provide an update to the electrical system issues that we've been having. And then we're gonna work on getting the fuel system buttoned up, which is the last step before we actually get the car running. Last week, if you're just catching up, we had a lot of electrical issues with the car. For some reason, the PCM wasn't turning on, I wasn't getting any power to the fuel pump, and I couldn't get any spark from the coils to the spark plugs. So what I ended up doing in the past week is I did a lot of work off camera. I ended up completely pulling the entire harness off of the car. I ended up going through it pretty much wire by wire until I could figure out kind of what's in the wrong location and why is it not working. It actually wasn't that hard to strip everything off of the car from the harness. It's really simple, which is probably one of the reasons why these LS swaps are extremely popular. After I got it off, I pretty much went pin by pin, checked to see what's going to the PCM, what's going to the main connector of the harness, and making sure everything is correct. There was a few issues in there that are now remedied, but what I think the end result was is there were some ground issues with the car. A lot of you pointed out that there were a lot of grounds on the engine and on the chassis itself, and there really are for the harness. So between Buff's Garage, Carbon Fiber, and everyone, really appreciate you guys pointing me in that direction. That's really what it ended up being. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at kind of what I've done to the engine and the wiring over the past week to get us to where we are today and see what happens when I turn the key. Now, the first thing you notice is there is no longer a giant mess of wires here. I actually ended up replacing the looming and everything that was on them with this looming, which I got from wire care. Same thing with the battery wires. They're all kind of buttoned up. They still need to be mounted to the side before I start it, but you can see the wires in a much better condition and much more organized now that this is all together. The computer needs to get, kind of this wire needs to get cleaned up, which I'm working on right now while I'm working on getting this fuel tank in because with the fuel tanks there, they kind of block off access. So that needs to get done. But you can see the grounds and everything now that are on the chassis back there. I have more grounds on the back of the head here. And then I need to put a ground down there for the fuel pump. So let's go ahead and give it some power. We're powered on, switches on down there. So with the key, which I've now mounted up here, turning it on should turn on the fuel pump for two seconds. Cool, that is on. Now that that's on, there should be a coil which I can check to see if there's any spark while it's turning over. So let me just go ahead and see if I can get that done. Recording while I'm doing this. So as you can see, good progress. Wiring harness is coming together. The fuel pump, you probably notice it's where it should be now. So with that down there, I just need to finish buttoning that up and then I can put in the other gas tank after that wiring's done. So right now I'm gonna work on finishing up this fuel system. So we're gonna make a few AN lines and then we're gonna end up mounting the regulator, hooking everything up and then we should be pretty much ready to start as soon as that gas tank is in. So for access to the fuel pressure regulator, I'm actually gonna mount it right here. And the reason why I'm mounting it right here is because I wanna be able to access it from the hatch and be able to see this. This should give me a straight shot from the fuel rails to here. And then I should be able to this will go to the return. This side will come to a fuel filter, which will be on the outlet of the pump up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get this done now. Now, one of the next things I need to do is run a fuel line from the engine to the regulator and it's gonna be coming through this port here. So I'm gonna mark this, cut this, and make a line. Now to cut this line, I'm actually gonna use a hacksaw. Not too bad. Now I'm gonna be using these from Cool Tools to put the hose together. So they're really convenient. Take it apart. Actually, I haven't used this size yet, so we're gonna use this one. We're gonna take the fitting size that we're using. We're gonna put it in place. We are going to add a spacer. And then we're going to 
clamp it, and then you push the hose in here. So this is uh, for a size six. I'm gonna add a little bit of PB blaster to it just to get some lubrication. A little bit. Then we're gonna take the hose and we're gonna push and force it in. So put it in and twist. Twist it a few times. I'll take it out. And there we go, we have the hose completely built. Didn't get any metal wire in my hand. So this line here is gonna be the return line, which is going back to the fuel tank, to the top of it. Now, we have a little bit of a fitting, so I'll probably do it right here. Okay, so the plan is I'm gonna be mounting this fuel pump against this plate here, and I need to lift it up to figure out where it's gonna be. I'm gonna end up putting a 90 degree fitting off of it, which I do not have right now, which is gonna come up to here and put this up where that's gonna go up from the top and into that fitting over there. This entire room here is all open, so it shouldn't be an issue. My issue will be is if there isn't enough room with the fuel tank, but I'm gonna see if I can lift this up a little bit extra, just maybe get a little bit of extra angle on it. So here we go, let's go ahead and get this mounted. All right, so the fuel system is set up for now. This, ideally, I'd want to get a 90 degree out of here to come to that fitting, to take some of the stress off here. I'm gonna end up grabbing that. This line is gonna to go to the top of the filter, which will be coming out of here. This is now secured. This will come up to this fitting up here to return back to the fuel tank, but I don't have the right size fitting here, so I need to get some more. So I'm gonna make sure that I get the right size fittings before I fully put this together. And it should be just completed in the next video. But for now, I'm gonna move it over to the computer and I gotta replace that floor, glue it in place, and then clean up that wiring so I can put the second gas tank in. Now, these floors are riveted in underneath and I actually have to take off the entire floor, pull it, I have to put sealant on the other side under there and then rivet it back in place. So I'm gonna do that now because it's, this is the last time this floor is gonna come out. So I have to do that with pretty much every single panel on the car, which are over there and sitting under the, everywhere. Okay, so I got the panels in, or at least that panel, but one of the things I just realized is in order to get the gas tank in, it's also gonna cover up the rivet holes here, which means this panel needs to go in too, which means I'm gonna lose access to everything back there. So I've been replacing the cooling tubes up there. Those, those metal ones are gone. Getting standard rubber ones that are gonna be installed. I'm gonna connect those later, but I gotta button this up first, so I'm gonna go ahead and put in 10,000 rivets here, just like I did there. So you can see this panel here is installed. The gas tank's actually pressure fit, so it gets compressed here against this, this, the back, and you have that plate to block the AC system. So I guess that panel's going in. That panel's all set up. Then I'm gonna end up just putting the gas tanks in and hooking everything up. So as I'm putting this in, I just realized that plate goes over that plate, which has rivets in it. So these rivets are coming out and this is going 
back together differently. All right, we're in. So this side's ready for the tank. Other side just needs that same panel put in. And then uh, pretty much good for the fuel system. All right, so we got this tank and you can see it's a pretty tight fit. So I gotta figure out how I'm gonna put that AN fitting on somehow. It's really tight up against the computer. I did some organization on the wires there. They're taped up back there. I can still do a little bit better. Maybe I'll take care of it after. The fitting is down, where is it? Down underneath there that I'm gonna have to Kind of work to get to to tighten these on but let's take a look at the other side now on the other side the hole isn't cut for the crossover for the tube so i need to cut that tube i also need to take out these coolant hoses so i got a lot of work ahead of me this upcoming week before this gets ready to start and run but i should be right where I need to be, because as soon as this is in and I have the right lines, fuel is good. Okay, so I've made a lot of progress on the car. The fuel system's not completely in, but as you see, kind of with these projects and these kit cars, you're essentially always finding more that you have to do. So I have to cut that panel out to give some space for the crossover for the fuel line from tank to tank. I'll do that during the week. I also placed my order from Summer Racing, so I have my stainless fuel line parts coming in so I can finish that up during the week this week. All I have to do now to start it is button up the fuel system, fill it with fluids, then I should be good to go. Thanks for tuning in this week on Smacky's Garage. I'll see you next time.